Over the past decade, the motorcycle world has seen an incredible leap in performance technology. Back in 2015, Kawasaki stunned everyone by introducing supercharging to the mainstream with the legendary Ninja H2. It wasn't just about raw power, it reshaped how riders and manufacturers thought about forced induction. Fast forward to today and rivals are not only catching up but adding their own innovative twists, especially with the integration of electric assistance for sharper throttle response and stronger low-end torque. Honda's V3R e-compressor, first shown as a concept, is already gearing up for production. And now, KTM has stepped into the spotlight, revealing its own groundbreaking version of this technology, one that blends mechanical drive and electric power into a single hybrid supercharger system. KTM's electric supercharger is revealed in a new set of patent applications from the Austrian firm, showing a design that splits the difference between Kawasaki's engine-driven supercharger and Honda's upcoming electric blower by combining both power sources into a single unit. We can't read too much into the KTM illustrations of the bike itself. They show a simple outline of an enduro-style single-cylinder machine, but the patent doesn't limit itself to such a design. Focusing on laying out the concept of a hybrid electromechanical supercharger that could be attached to any combustion engine. In the patent, KTM says it intends to use a scroll type compressor like VW's G Later blowers, although the document says a centrifugal supercharger, as used by Kawasaki and the Honda V3 concept, could also be implemented. The choice of a scroll compressor comes down to its lower cost and the low inertia which means it can be accelerated to operating speed more easily. Where the KTM design differs is in how the compressor is driven. Most conventional superchargers are driven by the engine, using a belt, chain, or gears to connect the blower to the crankshaft. So the rotational speed of the compressor is directly related to engine revs. That's in contrast to exhaust-driven turbochargers, which use a turbine in the exhaust to drive the compressor. Yamaha's recent patent filings highlight another path, the electrically assisted e-turbo. Similar systems are already seen in modern cars from Mercedes and Porsche, with suppliers like Garrett and BorgWarner leading development. These units work like normal turbos, using exhaust pressure to spin a turbine and drive a compressor, but add an electric motor to spool the turbo instantly, ensuring there's boost even when exhaust pressure is low. The result is virtually lag-free performance with torque available at any revs or throttle opening. An electric supercharger like the one Honda intends to employ on its upcoming V3R takes this principle further by using an electric motor alone to power the compressor, fully decoupling boost from engine speed and delivering sharper throttle response at low RPM. The KTM version uses both a mechanical connection to the engine's crankshaft and an electric motor to get the best of both worlds with a small electronically operated clutch between the supercharger and the engine to decouple the blower when it needs to use electric power to spin faster than engine RPM alone would allow. Breaking down the supercharger as shown in the patent illustrations, the input from the engine comes from a chain drive attached to the engine's output shaft. That goes via a small clutch to an electric motor or generator. From there, drive goes to a planetary transmission that gears up the input shaft's speed to spin the scroll inside the compressor at several times, the engine RPM. When the engine is running at low speed as shown in the patent, the supercharger clutch is open, disconnecting the compressor from the crankshaft so it can be driven by the electric motor alone, building more boost than would be possible with a purely engine-driven blower at the same revs. That means you should get instant throttle response with plenty of boost on demand at times. As engine revs increase, the clutch is closed to connect the supercharger to the crankshaft, so it no longer requires electrical energy and operates like a normal, all-mechanical design. In a third mode, the electric motor is operated while the clutch is in the closed state, so the supercharger is being driven by the engine and the electric motor simultaneously, maximizing the potential power. Similarly, the electric part of the supercharger can work as a generator when the connecting clutch is closed, but the throttle is closed, or you're not demanding full performance feeding electricity back to the bike's battery? KTM's patent points out that the design will allow it to create more efficient, lower emissions engines while simultaneously boosting performance, 
all while avoiding the lag issues of turbos and getting better low-end response than a simple engine-driven superchargers. And because electric power is only used in limited situations and the supercharger itself acts as a generator at other times, it doesn't need as large and heavy a battery as an all-electric supercharger. On paper, at least, it's a win-win design, and one that will be intriguing to see if it reaches a production bike. The question is, which company's forced induction system proves most practical in real-world riding? Kawasaki's supercharger delivers unrivaled performance at high speed, but it remains more of a halo technology. Thrilling, though less suited to everyday use due to its cost and complexity. Honda's upcoming electric supercharger favors accessibility, ensuring immediate throttle response and improved efficiency, but it relies heavily on battery capacity, which may limit sustained performance. Yamaha's electrically assisted turbo is an elegant middle ground, offering lag-free acceleration with proven reliability borrowed from modern automotive designs, though it adds intricacy to the overall system. KTM's hybrid supercharger, however, attempts to combine the best attributes of all three. The brute mechanical force of Kawasaki, the instant responsiveness of Honda, and the balanced efficiency of Yamaha. On paper, this blend could offer the most versatile and usable system, capable of delivering both everyday ridey ability and race-level performance. If KTM does bring this hybrid supercharger into production, it could mark a pivotal step in the next evolution of performance motorcycles. By blending mechanical drive with electric assistance, the brand may have found a clever balance between raw power, efficiency, and responsiveness. Much like Kawasaki did with the H2 a decade ago, KTM's approach has the potential to set a new benchmark that rivals will inevitably follow. Whether it debuts on a high-performance enduro, a street bike, or even a flagship supersport, this technology could redefine how riders experience power delivery in the years to come. Would you like to see KTM launch this system on a hardcore performance bike first, or a more practical street machine? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, we'd love to hear your take. If you enjoyed this video and want to dive deeper into the history and evolution of legendary motorcycles, from vintage Hondas to cutting-edge hyperbikes, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to SK for more exciting content. Ride safe, dream big, and stay tuned for our next story. Goodbye.